Well, the question is how to find the right guru. Yeah. Huh? yeah. How to find the right guru. That is the question. Okay, how to find the right guru. So when you go to a person, okay, you ask yourself, is he the right guru for me? Let's say here in the West. You would go to the Malayas or somewhere else right here in the mess. In the West there's so many people traveling around, so many sets of teachers and so on. So you ask yourself, well, is he the right guru? So what questions will you ask yourself to find out whether he's the right guru? Now you might be very, very sure of it just from looking at him. And say, well, and uh, you have a feeling of rapport, of a very close relationship. And, okay, this is the right guru for me. It might happen. Without any projections, it happens, and then you're very lucky. In other cases, you are not so sure. And when you are not so sure, I suggest you ask yourself some very fundamental, fundamental questions. First question, a very practical question, which I would ask myself. If I didn't know, I would ask myself, what does he live on? Does he have his own income? Or does he need his students to support him? When no one comes to him, no one comes to his satsang, what will he live on? Well, I look at him and says, well, he hasn't had any education. He hasn't learnt anything. He, well, he depends on his student. He giving satsang is the only thing he can do. He still might be a very good teacher, but I would have a second look at him to find out whether he really is. Don't you think that this is a wise question? What do you, what do you think? It's a very pra practical question. It's a very down-to-earth question. Does it make sense? Does it depend on the culture? Okay. That's why I said here in the West. Okay, yes. Yes? Said here in, the West. West, in Heidelberg. Mm -hmm. Let's say in Heidelberg. Yeah. Okay. A Heidelberg mm -hmm. teacher. Yeah. <laughs> no? See whether he's got his own income or whether he needs his money to support him. But uh, when we. Is it, is it the need of the teacher to be supported when the. Scholars, or what you call it? Students. Students. Students, students. When the students ask him to spend more time with them? No, I say it's perfectly all right. If he's a good teacher, perfectly all right to, to live on the student's money. If, the, if he's a good teacher, why should he go out and have a job as someone doing something in the world? He can be very much more helpful spending his time with the students. But when he needs the students to support him, if he doesn't have anything to look, anything uh, to, to support him, then I would have a second look at him. Mm -hmm. Is he really, really honest and truthful teacher? Mm -hmm. That's what I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your second thing is, when you're always a teacher, naturally you want to go to a state of greater fulfillment. Uh, your level of energy must rise somehow. Right? If it drags you and pulls you all the way down, it's stupid to go to the teacher. Before you were very free and happy, then you go to the teacher and he's very depressed or on the roof. You go down, no point in going. So it raises your level of energy. No? Third point, when there is a teacher, he should be able to understand you. Understand you with the problems you have. And you say to him, well, that's the way I feel, and this is the problem I have, and I don't know how to get out of this problem. He should be able to understand what you're talking about. Maybe he doesn't give you any answer, because this is not the right time for an answer to be given, but he should be able to understand you. When you talk to him and say, well, that's the way I feel, with the problem I have, and you realize that he doesn't have a clue as to what you are saying. He just doesn't understand. I think this is a very serious lack in a teacher. So you should test the teacher. You should examine the teacher and see whether he truly understands what you say, whether he is in rapport with yourself, whether he can connect to you. You should test him. Yes. 
you should do that. And I would say, well, he is a great enlightened teacher. He is a toko, great toko, from a Tibetan monastery, reborn again, came back to this earth plane to save all mankind. But when I talk to him, he doesn't understand what, what I'm saying. So he cannot be helpful to you. So you should examine him. You shouldn't go by a name of a teacher of being someone. Say someone truly enlightened. I said someone can be truly enlightened. He can be truly dumb. He doesn't understand what you're talking about. Someone is not that enlightened. Just maybe he had some satoru, satori, some samadhi, but he's not in a state of perfect enlightenment. But he can have a very special skill of helping you in your way. And he can have a very special understanding of your problems and help you. So you have to find out yourself. Right? Does it make sense? Can I okay. can a teacher help also without words? Those? Can a can a teacher help a student without words? Without Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely what's what that's what we are doing all the time. You know, we like like uh, going to stillness, there's a transference of energy happening and energy always happens without words. Definitely. Okay, thank you, Martin. Okay. Start my ten questions. Oh, okay, good. For me, there's one more point. Yeah. To judge a teacher. Yes. This is if he try if he's making one feel or, or giving the feeling of um. How do you say that, that this person ha should do more? Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Like, okay. Always get, giving the feeling of, oh, I should have done more. Oh, I'm not good enough. Okay. I have to learn this and this, and I have to go to that course, and I have to do this course. Mm -hmm. And the teacher should do this? No, it should not. Should not do this. Yes. Okay. Just should not do this. Okay. No. Okay. So this is important for you personally, right? Yes. Because you very think, very often probably think of, I should still do this, like you said, go to this and that course, and you want to get rid of all that. The teacher giving you a feeling that you're okay, and you don't have to do that, and you don't have to strive more. Not, no, no, no. That, that the teacher should. I, I mean, a teacher could, can give me the idea that it might be, it might be good for me to do yeah. something, but not as a permanent. Oh, that you uh, must do. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm not. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, 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 knew a, I know a person who is quite good in giving the feeling of okay. never being okay. never being enough. He's okay, then so creating a sort, sort of uh, uh, students, but this, these students around him, they always think they would have to do more, and more, oh, and more. Oh, I see. I see. And, and there's no. No satisfaction, never. Oh, okay. Right. But, okay, so this is important for you personally. For someone else it might be the other way around. Mm -hmm. Because some other person might be naturally lazy, you know, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And so it might be very helpful for him to have a teacher who nudges him or her a little bit. No, come, stop, up, get on moving, do something, go out, meet people, talk to people, you know, mm -hmm. do this and do that. So, okay. 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 Actually, I think the teacher would have the, right. the capacity to see it. To see what the person Visually. needs. That so would be the right teacher. Is what is needed, ah, what probably. Like, that would be mm -hmm. good. Like looking at Mariana and know what Mariana needs. Because you don't even have to ask him. This, this would, that would be the right teacher. See what you need at the present moment, which can change all the time. What you need today might not be the same thing you need next week. Right? Yeah. 